What's up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, CEO, MTS Nutrition, creator of the Outright Bar, and Chief Marketing Officer, TigerFitness.com, the Tiger Fitness Facebook group. Go to Facebook, go to search, type in Tiger Fitness Group, it'll come right up. Anyway, you got to get approved to be a member because just like the jackets in the 80s, these are members only. But I want to make sure y'all know you can come, and as long as you answer the three questions, I'll let you in. Just don't be creepy. All right, so... It's been a while since I've answered these. Been really busy with the holidays and travel. However, I will be doing these weekly again. So if any questions you want answered, you go to that Tiger Fitness group, you ask them. So without further ado, let's get to answering these. From Justin Horvers. After back day, I get spasms sometimes when I push myself. Anything I can do to prevent. I also stretch a lot. Well, I mean, a lot of things can cause spasming, right? One thing I want to look at is hydration and electrolytes. Are you drinking enough water? Are you getting enough electrolytes? It's not always just water. You have to have your electrolytes on point too. So I recommend if you are an athlete, if you train a lot, right? If you are active, if you sweat, I do recommend you salt your meals with sea salt, Himalayan pink salt. I don't like table salt because it's just sodium chloride, right? I want to see you get the natural forms of salt because it has other minerals and healthy benefits to it. Also, what I do is during the day, like in this shaker cup, I have MTS Nutrition Naturalite in it, which has your potassium, your calcium, your sodium from sea salt, only sea salt in there, as well as coconut water powder. What that does, it gives you electro electrolytes, has a great, for, a great health profile on it, great health benefits. Bottom line is make sure your hydration is enough, make sure your liquid intake is enough, and also you could just be adapting. I know when I train really, really hard, and I don't know what's going on, but you have some neurological things that go on. So when you completely stimulate, annihilate an area, your muscles and your brain might still be firing. So it could also be something completely unrelated to hydration, could be neurological, could just be your nerves firing. But spasms, is it a cramp? Or is it just like sometimes my calf will twitch, like just a little, just a little twitch, right? Whatever it is, you know what? If it's not bothering you, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd make sure, again, everybody should do this anyway. Focus on hydration, focus on electrolytes, and if it's too much and it's affecting you, maybe scale back. Maybe you progress too soon. Maybe you needed a progressive overload at a bit more of a moderate pace. However, from what I can tell, it's not that big of a deal because I get them myself. When I train extra hard my legs, I will spasm. I will cramp a little. Maybe there's something wrong with me, but I don't worry about it. I just move on. From Bobby Sclater, what kind of set and rep range for each body part? Also, how many times a week do you train each? Good question, and it depends. Now, most workouts, if you guys aren't following my vlog, you should. I am vlogging my Road to Pro card, which will be in July of 2021. Now, my training is generally such. So if I'm doing chest, I have my main mover. So my main mover would be dumbbell bench press. What I do with that, again, I'm a very advanced trainer. This might not work for a moder an intermediate or a beginner. What I do is I start out 50 pound dumbbells for six. Then I go 75 for around five to six. 100 for around three to six. 120 for around, uh, let's say three reps. 140 for two to three reps. Then I do my main set, which would be 160 for as many reps as possible. For me this week, it was six. Then I move on. Second exercise, so that's my pyramiding up, maxing out set, right? That's my main movement. That's the one I want to progressive overload in. Progressive overload needs to be done not in every exercise, in my opinion. Second exercise, I usually do some kind of a cable fly. So the cable fly, I'll lay down in between, put a flat bench again, this is all on my YouTube, and I'll fly. Eight to 12 reps, all right? Third exercise, I usually do some kind of a machine press. Machine press, I'll generally do between 15 and 20 reps because I want to really exhaust the muscle. And that would pretty much be how I'd lay it out. So basically, I want to do an all-out progressive overload. I want to do an 8 to 12, and then I do like a 15 to 20. That could vary. Some days I go in the gym, and I'm like, you know, I just feel like doing high reps. Well, that last week, I went into the gym, basement gym, and they have the, uh, the mag grips, which I love. They have wide, mid, and narrow. I did four sets of each. Um, so that's 12 total sets for lap pull downs. And then I moved on and did high rep rows. You know, so it just depends on the day for me. But for you, it depends on your goals. 
for me as an advanced trainer, a lot of times I just go in there with a mindset to fucking destroy shit. Um, I'm advanced enough where if I stimulate and I'm motivated and I'm having fun, I'm going to get a great workout. But again, it's different when you have that level of experience. All right. So that's what I do personally. What you should do, I recommend my Big Five program. If you go on Google, type in Big Five Training Low Blinder. Go on the tigerfitness.com uh, page. Go in the search bar and type in Big Five Training Low Blinder. It'll come right up. That's a great system that'll give you a great base to start. <clears throat> Hello, Mark Low Blinder. As you know and we understand, consumers demand full disclosure on ingredients. Do you think that because of this, companies aren't investing in any R&D as new findings will be copied by other companies? Honestly, don't see any major advances in supplements since the 90s. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. We've had Physicor. We've had Pico 2, which I turned into Peak Physicor. You've had the advent of fenucides, um, different extracts from fenugreek. You've had, um, shit, we've had a, an ingredient that stops the shit since the 90s. You had beta alanine. Um... We've had dynamine, we've had teacrine. I don't know what you're talking about. Here's the deal, the outright bar is and will be knocked off by dozens of companies. We will still be first to market. I innovate with everything I do, every fucking thing I do. I don't give a shit if these low lowlifes copy me. At the end of the day, I'm a step ahead and I'm gonna dominate that category. Remember what else people copied of mine? BCAA, intra-workout. The intra-workout category is now worth hundreds of millions of dollars. The first, the creator, as long as they're good at marketing, will always be first. The brand that I brought to the market that created the intro workout category is still number one, despite going through two different owners after I sold it. So you're absolutely incorrect. You're incorrect. The reason companies don't invent things is because they're talentless ass clowns. I spend my entire day looking for shit to make it awesome. I look the entire day, shit, I spent three years formulating the outright bar. Three years. And now these no talent ass clowns are sending it off to bakeries to have it reverse engineered. That's just a lack of talent and laziness and a lack of vision. So anybody that comes out with a knockoff of my bar is simply a low life, lack of vision having ass clown. It is what it is. So you need to just stay loyal. Bottom line is, Everything I create is something better than the previous version or is an all new category together. I dare you to put Immortal, our vitamin pack, up against Animal Pack, up against any other pack. We blow them away. Can you explain to me why Animal Pack has microgram dosing of BCAA? What the fuck's that going to do? So I address those issues. So if I am going into an existing category, which as a businessman, I'd be stupid not to do. I'm not just going to go say, hey, I want to make the outright bar. And I'm going to go and I'm going to say, I'm going to fucking destroy this thing. So no, I, I think you're incorrect. We've had a lot of great ingredients. Shit, look at um, look at look at Prima V and Insurgent. That's in the latest 2000s. We were the earliest adopter to that. You know, uh, Physicor. We were the first ones to get behind that because we're all about innovation. We're all about these partnerships that bring innovation and results to people's lives. And that's why you need to put your trust into us because we're working night and day, dude. My wife and I have five different variations of the Outright Bar, over 30 flavors by the end of 2020. Let them try to catch up. Those no talent ass clowns, they ain't gonna catch up. And even if they do, they're not gonna do as great of a job as we do, period, the end. So yes, there's plenty of innovation. Here's another innovation, the Outright Bar. But let's be real. You think Quest was afraid people would knock them off? There's 800 Quest Bars on the market. Quest did what we did. They just did it years earlier. They innovated a new brand, a new category with bars. And they're reaping the benefit. They just sold for a billion dollars. The second adopted to the industry, to the uh, category, one bar, just sold for $397 million. In the Healthy Whole Food Bar, our X bar sold for $600 million after $120 million in sales. Think about that fucking multiple. That's innovation right there, son. So I disagree with you. I disagree. I want knockoffs. So I continue knocking the shit out of them. It just shows that they have no talent. And I'm great. I'd love to go to bat with them. I'd love to go to war. Let's bring it, bro. Bring it. Talentless ass clown. It's kind of, I made two cycles of, duh, 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 duh. bro, I don't, I don't answer the drug stuff. <laughs> oh, wait. He, dude, go see a doctor. This is for Ian Q. Daniel. I don't know that stuff, man. At least I don't know it on YouTube. Um, 
from Philip Milutinovic. 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 What are your maintenance calories and how long do you stay at maintenance and how long do you stay at a surplus? Do you go into surplus for a while then drop it back? You know, I'm in a bulk right now because I'm getting ready for my pro show in 2021. Slow and steady wins the race. Right now, my average daily calories, my macros right now, are 250 grams of protein, okay? Um, 350 grams of carbohydrate and 100 grams of fat. Now, on days when I box, when I expend extra calories, 400 grams carbohydrate, 300 grams protein, and 100 grams of fat. So that's what I currently have going on. But no, I, I don't, I either bulk or I lose. And you should never bulk to the point where you're too fucking fat, you have to cut, right? You should always keep it tight. Rob Jr., been reading some on push-pull days, protein synthesis, et cetera, versus bro split. I know you're big on doing what is fun and what you enjoy, but is different significant enough to say, no, because here's why, Rob. Basically, is there a big significance in protein synthesis if you do push day, pull days versus body part? So when you train your chest, are you only training this? When I do this motion, what's being worked? Triceps. My legs are being worked to stabilize on the floor on the bench. My core is being worked to keep me from falling over. My delts are being activated. My biceps are an antagonist. And my lats are being activated as an antagonist and a prime mover through the lift alongside the chest if you're lifting correctly. If I'm doing squats, am I only working legs? No, I'm working my core, working my chest, shoulders, arms. The bottom line is there is no such thing as a bro split. If you train body part, you're still training full body. And I'll argue, let's assume you are training only that body part. If at the end of the week, your volume is the same, it doesn't fucking matter. Don't overthink things. From Bridget Ripley, letting young kids use treadmill because they enjoy it and it's freezing outside, heart filled in the mental health. No. Anytime you get a kid active and moving is good. In fact, running on that treadmill is going to activate more parts of their brain than any homework they're ever going to do. Exercise is the key to unlocking intellectual greatness from Peyton Havard beast. I thank you, Peyton Guillermo Ruiz. Do you think you can only work out two days a week and make gains? You can work out one hour a month and make gains. The key is relative to what, what is optimal two days a week is not enough. In my opinion, to do much of anything. However, it's better than zero. My opinion is something is better than nothing. However, that's pretty fucking close to nothing. In my opinion, three to four days a week is the minimum you need to make any appreciable gains. However, if your time restricts it or if you just don't want to do it, anything's better than nothing because dying really sucks. From Brian Brown, flexible dieting versus bro foods. What is the best diet for optimal results? Well, let me answer this and I'll answer the second one. The bottom line is flexible dieting should include bro foods. You should focus your diet on the most micronutrient dense, healthy foods possible from grass-fed beef, to wild-caught salmon, to broccoli, to spinach, to kale, to asparagus, to fruits, to all that stuff, right? So the bottom line is, there is no best diet. The best diet is one where you control your macronutrients, okay, to fit your goal, whether it's gaining or losing, based on weight loss, lose one to two pounds a week of dieting, gain one to two pounds a month of bulking, and fill it with foods that you enjoy, that you prefer, that also have health benefits and micronutrient density. Chicken and rice gets born to eat every day. Chicken and rice is probably the stupidest fucking meal on God's green earth. Chicken is the peasant of all meat sources. If you have a choice between chicken, grass-fed beef, or even grain-fed beef, and wild-caught fish, choosing chicken is the worst choice. Rice, while extremely hypoallergenic and easy to digest, is simply a micronutrient deficient carbohydrate. Why would you eat rice if you could have sweet potato or a banana? That's my opinion. Again, it's not that they're bad, it's that there's better. And you could do better than rice, you could do better than chicken. So I don't know where the chicken and rice thing came from, it's probably because it's low fat, but it is probably the most stupid meal you could possibly fucking consume. Anyway guys, that's it. I'm gonna link it down below the Tiger Fitness Facebook group. Appreciate it, be sure to join. I'll see you guys next time. That's not a game. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Look who I ran into in LA. Good to meet you. I've been watching your videos a long time. Tell me about this protein bar. So it's the Outright Bar, man. It's all natural ingredients, made with real food, 
none of that, you ever, you ever want to work out, you want just a little snack, a little bar before training, but you know the other bars might give you gut bomb. Right. This is something that doesn't have any prebiotic fiber, no glycerin, no sugar alcohols. It's whole, real food. That is a tasty bar. Really? It's easy to eat. It's not too chewy. You normally eat something like this with a big ass glass of milk. That's good. <laughs> so it's like a cookie. Really good. It's not good. If you want, we also have the, want to try the almond butter one while we're here? I'd love to. All right, so this is, bar. this is made with almond butter, Steve. That's a one or two. Really? It's badass. Yeah. Good protein bars, working people find these. Well, they can find it at any retail stores. You can find it at tigerfitness.com. Two badass protein bars. So they get uh, two double uh, metal fingers up <laughs> from Stone Cold Steve Austin, and that's the bottom line.